we're going to go ahead and take a look at the D feature tool that was introduced in SOLIDWORKS 2011. Now functionality similar to this was actually introduced in SOLIDWORKS 2003. In an assembly such as this, if you went to the File, Save As command, you could actually take an assembly and save it as a SOLIDWORKS part file. Now the idea here is that you really only had three simple options. We'll would go ahead and either save just the exterior faces, um, exterior components, meaning things internal to this assembly would be removed, or all components. And these last two options would actually save this as a multi-bodied part within SOLIDWORKS. Now with that, all dynamic assembly motion was frozen, and it was really more geared towards sending these files to people that had a different CAD software. Uh, it wasn't really so user friendly uh, for being utilized in SOLIDWORKS from this point on. With SOLIDWORKS 2011 though, this feature really matures and turns into something we have called D feature. Now if you look at this assembly, obviously there's fasteners and some shafts uh, coming out of this uh, casing. But if we take a look at a little display state we have in here, you can actually see that the internal detail is pretty significant. In fact, if we go ahead and grab this input shaft, the gears turn, the meshes are going to go ahead and be the proper mesh ratios based on a gear mate, and we see that there's obviously some bearings and other details within this assembly. So what we're going to do here is access the new tool in SOLIDWORKS 2011 under the Tools pull-down menu, simply called D Feature. This is going to throw us into about a four-step process. So over in the Property Manager, the first step is start by removing unneeded components. And this can be done selectively, it can be done very globally, using or combining the criteria that we have here in the Remove options. You can either say all internal components, which in this case, SOLIDWORKS actually calculates this using uh, what's referred to as a series of viewing points. So think of there being a big bounding sphere around this assembly and a series of cameras placed around that sphere. And if so many of those cameras can't see apart, it's actually deemed as an internal component. That's going to play a little bit into this one uh, as we move forward. So you can do that. You can also say small components. And notice I can say also, also select components. So we can combine these criteria. What I'm going to do for starters here is actually just say remove parts that are less than 10% of the size of this assembly. And with remove selected here, we're going to update our display. And what you'll see is that the small fasteners, all these little heads that used to be sticking out here, have gone away. So those are small parts. Again, less than 10% of the overall size of this assembly. Well, really what we're going to do on this one is actually utilize internal components. So with that one, we'll switch our criteria up. And as I click Next, what you'll actually notice is that some of the fastener heads over here on the right will actually reappear. Let's go ahead and let my graphics update here in a second. Okay, that looks pretty good. So some of these uh, fasteners here have reappeared since they're now no longer part of that 10% or less of the uh, overall assembly criteria. But you'll notice that some of the fasteners on the inside of this pocket are actually not seen by enough of the cameras to be deemed an exterior component. Therefore, those are removed automatically. In fact, if we take a look at our feature manager, you'll also see that there's quite a few hidden components there. The bearings, the sleeves, the gears, a lot of stuff that was on the inside of that casing. So the second step that we have to deal with here is actually dealing with assembly motion. And this really lends itself well to if we want to take this assembly and send it to somebody who does use SOLIDWORKS, it'll actually retain a lot of the SOLIDWORKS functionality. But the idea is that using this D feature tool is not just going to remove extraneous components, but it's about keeping your data your data. It's about removing interior things, not just components, but features, proprietary things. Um, could be manifolds, could be a you know a patented snap ring groove, who knows? But it's something inside that you don't want anybody else to have. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and maintain the motion because obviously this is a gearbox. Whoever's going to utilize this is going to go ahead and throw it into a higher level assembly and it needs to move and fit and function as the gearbox. So to maintain assembly motion, we're going to create groups. Now groups can actually be a single part. I'll start off by saying I want the casing and the two bearings. We'll go ahead and pick uh, those three components and we'll create a group. You can see that they've color coded out here, grouped together in the same color take the input shaft, again a single part, but we'll go ahead and create that as a second group. And then our output shaft will create that as a third group. Now they have three different colors here. And what happens is any of the mates that are intermingled between those three different groups automatically get kept. So we have a little list right here that shows a gear mate, a hinge mate, and a concentric and coincident mate. So actually there's more like five mates here because that gear mate kind of works off as two mates. But that's going to be the mates that are common between the pink parts, the blue part, and the yellow part. So as we say next, what we're now going to see is the features to keep. 
Now features that are necessary for the definition of the, uh, the mates themselves automatically get kept. So now we have an option to supplement this by adding things that we want kept. So in this case, all I'm going to do is select things that are obviously necessary. If we're going to send this to somebody and they're going to bolt this up into a real assembly, well, these four holes are probably going to be pretty critical. So let's just proactively keep those. I'm also going to go ahead and do a simple select tangency on this inside face, and we'll keep most of the detail of that pocket, considering a shaft is going to be sticking out of there. There's also some interesting auto select features here for automatically selecting holes between a particular maximum and minimum size uh, or just selecting all holes. Now all holes could be anything cylindrical that cuts through so that might be a little bit overwhelming but being proactive or being very selective um, you've got some options either way that you go. So that looks pretty good right now. Go ahead and click next and now the magic takes place. SOLIDWORKS calculates the uh, almost final outcome. <clears throat> so what we'll see here is based on the criteria that we've got, a series of parts have been hidden, or in this case actually removed from this assembly, and we'll be served up with a little bit of a side-by-side -side window here. Now on the right side we have a full preview, and it is just a preview window. In fact, I can't middle mouse button pick and drag, and I can't pick on the parts, because it is just a preview window. However, if I do go ahead and rotate and pan on my left side window, the active window, you'll see that the right side is going to go ahead and sync right up with that. Now this also gives us an opportunity to show us exactly what took place. Right here in each of the windows there's been these section view buttons. Now if we go ahead and click on the section view tool, what you'll see in the left window is exactly what the assembly looks like now with all of its interior detail, and now what it looks like on the right with all the details scrubbed. Now the complexity that we have on the inside of this with the little manifold openings and the different snap ring grooves and things, this is a very difficult thing to manually suppress or extrude to fill in or otherwise um, solidify the interior features here so that nobody gets the proprietary details. It's extremely complex interior actually. There's a lot of internal ribs for strengthening, but pockets in there for housing oil and other types of things. But you see how it completely filled up the volume over here with a few simple steps. So it's a tremendous, tremendous step forward to be able to keep a part or an assembly very functional but really automatically scrub that interior detail. Now at this point we're going to go ahead and click next and we've got our final options. I can either save the model as a separate file which is going to be our preview window. Uh, we can publish this directly to 3D Content Central so if your purpose was to save this information and publish it to the website for other people to use well now you've secured the things that you want to keep secure and the rest can be uh, sent out to the public. Or you can just store your settings for future use. Now I'm going to go ahead and save uh, the model is a separate file, but it's also going to store these features uh, for its future use. You'll actually see the feature manager here update. So when I say OK, I'll be prompted for a save location, and that's for our new assembly. And then once that happens, the assembly preview window is now going to go ahead and switch up. It's going to get a proper extension. It's going to get a full feature manager. And dozens of parts that were in the original casting, uh, including all the fasteners and things that we had there, has now been pared down to just a series of some simple components that we've got here. So you can see there's not actually a whole lot to it anymore. Pretty interesting stuff. If we look over at our original assembly now, what we'll actually see over there is at the top of the feature manager we have a feature now called the feature, which if I go ahead and click on that and say edit feature, kind of jumps us right back into the same settings. So everything over there in the feature manager is actually set from start to finish the way that our final outcome here was achieved. Well, the first thing that I thought of when I saw those interior section views on this is that we now have two SOLIDWORKS assemblies that, although they appear exactly the same right now, are actually significantly different when it comes to volume. Because now, if we're talking a mass properties calculation, I've got a concern. So this is what happens. If we go to our original assembly and actually do a quick mass properties, uh, we're set up in metric over here, so let me just quickly switch this over to pounds. That's really the only one I'm looking for right now. If we look at pounds, and maybe we'll go inches on uh, length also, It'll be a little easier to read. We're looking at about 9.98 pounds, so roughly about 10 pounds. Center of mass is roughly about negative 0.88, uh, positive a quarter, and roughly about zero on the Z. Well, if we take a look at our new assembly, hit our mass properties, what we're served up with here is computed or calculated mass properties. In other words, we have identical mass properties regardless of volume, we have identical CG, negative 0.88 and uh, 0.24 and then roughly about zero on the Z. 
So sending this file to somebody with SOLIDWORKS is not only good because their mass properties are going to calculate properly, but if we go ahead and actually take a look at this assembly and grab this input shaft, you'll see that dynamic assembly motion is completely maintained simply based on the fact that that was one of the steps in our defeature tool. Now of course I could take this assembly and save it off as any one of the neutral file formats and give it to anybody else in the world that I might like, but this tool, unlike the uh, previous thing that I was showing you with SOLIDWORKS 2003 Save as a Part, actually really allows this to be used not only among other CAD systems, but fully amongst SOLIDWORKS assemblies with full functionality.